like to start the presentation. Um, welcome everyone. My name is uh, David Hayes. I'm Director of Watershed Management. I'd like to thank you for joining us this afternoon, this evening, so that we can share information on our Thompson Mill project. Um, we hope this evening to provide you some very useful information to understand why we're going to be in your community, in your neighborhood, what we're doing there, the schedule of events that are going to take place, and uh, what we hope to accomplish. So this evening, you're going to hear from a host of professionals on the watershed team. They're going to uh, introduce themselves and tell you a bit about what they do and provide you information on the upcoming project. We're very excited about this project because we know that this has been an area that has had its share of major water main breaks. And this is our opportunity to correct that situation to prevent future breaks and to improve the infrastructure in that area. Uh, next slide, please. This project is taking place in District 5 and District 7. Um, District 5 is Commissioner Rudia Davis Johnson and District 7 Super District, Ms. Lorraine Cochran Johnson. Um, do we have any commissioners or any uh, elected officials in the room this evening? If not, um, I'd like to thank the commissioners for their support. Without their support, this project would not be uh, where it is today. And it's because of the commissioners and their support that um, Watershed is making great advancements on the infrastructure. We're improving the water and the sewer system, and uh, we're having great success with it. So again, thank you for the support of the commissioners. Next slide, please. I'd like to give you a little bit more of a background on the watershed, what we do and um, what we provide the services that we provide to the community. Um, next slide. Watershed, we service just over 700,000 and we're continually growing. So we're nearing the 800,000 mark of residents that um, again, we provide the service to. We provide service using our Scott Camlin drinking water facility. This drinking water facility is in the north side of the county, and um, it has the ability to treat 120 million gallons of drinking water a day that we take from the Chattahoochee River. Current demand for DeKalb County is just around 70 million gallons of drinking water per day, and that's 70 million gallons of drinking water per day that we produce and put into that uh, distribution system to get it to your businesses and your residents throughout the Cab County. Once you use that water, a portion of it goes back into our drainage system, our collection system, and that goes over to one of our two wastewater treatment facilities. You have the Scott, the Snapfinger wastewater treatment facility in the south central part of the Cab, and in the south eastern part of the cab, you have the Polar Bridge facility. Between those facilities, they have the capacity to treat as much as 56 million gallons of wastewater per day. Um, currently, the wastewater coming to those two facilities is just at around 35 million gallons of, drink, of wastewater per day. Now, sending that water to your houses and your business from the drinking water plant and then collecting that water from your houses and businesses and sending it over to one of the wastewater facilities, that's using our water and sewer infrastructure that's comprised of just over 5,000 miles of pipe. If you were to extend that pipe from end to end, 5,000 miles of pipe is enough pipe to go from Georgia to California and back. It's a great deal of pipe. And this pipe, it's old. A great deal of it is 
well over 50 years of age and has reached its useful life expectancy. Some of the pipe material um, has been deteriorated because of the soils and um, some maybe from construction that has gone on in the area where construction contractors have hit or damaged our pipe systems and uh, then they need to be replaced or repaired. So what we're hoping to do today is to come into this community and add new water infrastructure that will allow us to continue to maintain the demand, the growing demand for this area and to prevent or reduce the breakages and outages in this area. Next slide, please. And so what this is saying, what we're doing here, we're coming in, we're adding new infrastructure so that we can reduce the breaks in the area. What that's going to do when we add that new infrastructure to reduce breaks, it's gonna improve our customer service, give us reliability so that you have few to no water outages and little to no issues with the safety of the water that's being delivered to you. And that's going to yield a community that can handle the growth that we're seeing in DeKalb County. This work will allow us to um, continue to function 70 plus years past this project uh, start and finish date. We've put together what we call a super team. The super team is being led by DeKalb County Watershed's own engineering uh, division and the engineering division who's leading the super team, um, they put together a team that consists of engineering firms um, who have helped us to design this project, another engineering firm to help us manage this project, and then um, SDNC is the contractor who's going to actually put the system in the ground. So with this team, we're very confident that we're going to be on time, under budget, and reduce the headaches and stress that a project of this size may cause the community. The next person you're going to hear from is uh, Assistant Director Cassandra Marshall. She is the uh, Assistant Director of the Capital Improvement Project, and she's going to tell you a little bit more about why we're here and what we're going to do. Ms. Marshall. Thank you, Director Hayes. Good evening. My name is Cassandra Marshall. And as Director Hayes stated, I am the Assistant Director of the Watershed CIP Program Management Team. Um, I have over 20 years of experience in construction management. I'm also a licensed water professional and a certified project manager. So in these next few slides, I will provide an overview of the system problems and our solution to repairing the aging water system. Next slide. So the problem. Well, in this area, the county has been faced with more than 44 water main breaks from 1989 to 2021. Um, we've also had 19 complaints about brown water or low water pressure issues from 2017 to 2021. Brown water is an indication of sediment or rust accumulation in the water main over time. It can also be present after a water main break, which stirs up deposits in the system. Therefore, we must thoroughly flush the water main after the break and disruption to remove any deposits. Um, this primary is due to the infrastructure being installed in the 1960s. The pipe material in this area is primarily cement and small quantities of cast iron pipe. Um, this pipe is at the end of its useful life and the number of pipe failures are a good indicator that the pipe is in need of replacement. Next slide. The county has over 3,000 miles of pipe in the water system to maintain and provide drinking waters to the ratepayers. And we also have four pressure zones, 21 water storage facilities, those are shown in the cyan colors on the map, 16 pumping stations shown in the blue color on the map. Um, as you can see, this is a large system to maintain. 
Most of the system is aged and cannot be repaired or replaced all at once. Therefore, the county had to develop a best practice way to evaluate and to prioritize how and when the piping will be replaced. Um, our first objective was to model the system. In 2019, the county developed its first hydraulic model. A hydraulic water model is a computer simulation of the water system. The model can provide a big picture look at how the system should be functioning. To develop the model, we use the county GIS data, meter data of the water usage from the billing system, system facilities data, such as water storage facilities and regulated stations. Um, this data was ultimately used to develop the county master plan and to prioritize projects. Next slide. So to this point of the presentation, you've heard about the problem and the development of the replacement plan. I will now speak about the solution and the execution of the CIP project. So what does CIP stand for? CIP or Capital Improvement Project is a project that helps maintain or improve an asset. It can either be new construction, an expansion, renovation, or replacement of an existing infrastructure. In 2021, the uh, Board of Commissioners approved a $2.4 billion CIP program for projects to be completed from 2021 to 2030. The Thompson Mill Water Main Replacement Project is a $4.1 million project included in that plan. My team, the CIP team, is responsible for getting that work done. My team includes four DWM construction managers, 12 licensed inspectors, and later in the presentation, you will also hear from the construction project manager for this project, Mr. Baca Jackson. He has 10 years of construction management experience and is a licensed water professional. Along with in-house staff, uh, we are also supported by consultant firms who help assist the county with construction management and inspection services. So what do we want you to know? Well, we're here to help. We wanna reduce or eliminate emergency repairs. We wanna stop the breaks. And we also want to protect the environment. Finally, after this project is complete, it will improve sustainability to the system. You will now hear from Mr. Bacchus Jackson about the project scope and overview. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. As Ms. Marshall just stated, I am the construction project manager for the project of Thompson Mill Road Water Replacement Project. Um, my team will consist of one construction manager, which is myself, two consultant inspectors, one DeKalb County inspector. I will also work closely with the general contractor, which is SDNC Incorporated, and his subcontractors on this project in order to facilitate a quick and efficient project completion. Slide. So let's talk about the Thompson Mill Road um, replacement project scope. So first of all, the plan event is to mobilize equipment such as dump trucks, backhoes, and materials will consist of concrete, gravel, and asphalt along the pipes and fittings. We will also have traffic control, which will establish with the sign postings and traffic control personnel. This personnel will use traffic cones and signs to direct traffic around the construction zone. So what's in the project? The installation will consist of 710 linear feet of eight inch um, piping and 10,050 linear feet of 12 inch ductile iron water main inside the right of way and on the existing pavement. Once we're finished um, installing all of that pipe, um, we will establish a new water line. These new water lines happens to be in two phases. The first services will be connected to the new water main when they are tested and sanitized. The second phase is when they are connected to the homes, which is you guys. This is one of the last stages of construction. Decommissioning the old water lines and services, we will also do that as well. And then once we end all that, we will have the final restoration, which include grass and curbs and anything that was disturbed during the construction. Slide. This is our project map. Um, as you can see, we will pretty much start at the 
Snap Finger Road, if you notice on the red line going across there, that is Thompson Mill Road. Um, so from between Snap Finger Road and Panola Road, some of the streets that will be impacted at the intersections will possibly be, not possibly be, but will be Miller Road, Panola Road, Snap Finger Road, and Thompson Mill Road. Those are the actual lining that we're going to actually go from, like I said, Snap Finger to Panola slide. The method that we will be doing construction will be called the open cut method. This method consists of cutting the asphalt, digging the trench, and installing a new water line, backfilling the trench, and replacing the asphalt. Slot. The duration of the project. First, I want to start out saying that we had started um, putting out community notices around May 15, 2023. Um, the preparation and mobilization will commence around June 12, 2023. Um, construction start will be around June 15, 2023. Final restoration, paving, and everything will be around January 3rd or in and about 2024. And as the construction end will be January 31st, 2024. Now, all these dates that I mentioned are pretty much weather and site condition. Um, dependent slot. Ladies and gentlemen, we are the boots on the ground. My team are my team and I on the ground are the first line of the contact for the project. From the first day of commencement, my team will be on site to ensure that construction activities, which include ensuring the erosion and sedimentation controls are in place, ensuring that the contract is installing the pipe according to the contract documents drawings and specifications, and ensuring that all safety measures are in place, ensuring that all trenches and holes are backfilled and secure for that day. Slide. As you notice on the screen, you see where we'll be open cut on the left side, which it shows before, and then you notice on the right side, which is the after. Overall, the construction team will ensure that this project is completed and is properly restored. As I mentioned before, each one of those pictures show the different sites and you see where it's half of the road and we're gonna come back with asphalt. Now, I will turn this back over to Ms. Marshall, Assistant Director Marshall, who will discuss the community awareness. Thank you, BJ. I will now address community concerns and what the community should be aware of. Next slide. So what to expect? Well, unfortunately, what comes with construction are inconveniences in which we wanna to try to minimize. Um, what you're gonna see though is a lot of construction traffic, foot and vehicles, large dump trucks and heavy equipment, um, a lot of construction workers, county employees, and contracted workers throughout your community. Um, there will be material, and equipment deliveries by means of large tractor trailers. However, the crews and flaggers will guide these large vehicles in and out of the community. And as a security measure, all of the county contractors and county employees will have identification badges and marked vehicles. Um, there will be increased noise from the equipment backup alarm, heavy equipment usage and saw cutting of the asphalt. Um, our typical work hours are from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and sometimes on weekend. Um, residents will always have access to their driveway during construction, and notifications will be distributed prior to any water service disruption. Next slide. So the sign at the bottom left of the screen is an example of a sign we re require our contractors to install prior to starting work in the area. These signs are to be placed in the view of line of traffic, and on every street impacted at a minimum of 72 hours prior to start of construction. On the bottom right is an example of a generic county contractor sign to be placed on unmarked company vehicles. Other vehicles will have their company logos. All cars on the county's project site must be marked and identifiable as a security measure. Next slide. The contractor will provide traffic control to guide residents through the construction zone. Um, message boards, such as the one shown to the right, will be placed at Thompson Mill and Snapfinger Road 
Thompson Mill and Snapfinger and Thompson Mill and Panola a minimum of a week prior to the start of construction. Next slide. You will now hear from Ms. Alicia T. Penny about public communications. Ms. Marshall, thank you so much. Assistant Director Marshall, thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Alicia Penny, and I'm the Public Relations Manager for the Department of Watershed Management. I've been with the department for 20 years, and for the past 10 years have served as the Public Relations Manager. My team stands ready to partner with you on this project, as well as projects across the county, as we seek to improve our water and sewer infrastructure. So tonight, <clears throat> I will share with you the methods that DWM will utilize to communicate with you about this project. Next slide. Leading up to tonight's meeting, you received a notification letter, um, similar to the one you see to your far left, informing you of the project, the dates and times of the project, and tonight's meeting. Going forward, 48 to 72 hours prior to any, um, prior to, excuse me, the beginning of construction and any major change in construction, each homeowner will receive a notification letter or a door hanger like the one you see here, which will tell you what to expect during that part of the construction process. We will also use Gov Delivery eBlast notification uh, as a way to communicate with you. So at this time, if you've not taken the opportunity to provide us with your email address, if you would please place that information in the chat so that the outreach team can grab that information so that we can use that to communicate with you in the future. Also, if you are aware of any homeowners associations, we are partnering with our district commissioners to get those lists. However, we welcome you providing that information for us so that we'll know what homeowners associations we should be connecting with. Next slide. These are the touch points we will use to communicate with you. First, we have the project hotline, which includes a 1-800 phone number and email address. It's important to let you know that that line is not manned 24 seven. However, if you leave a message, someone will return your call within 24 to 48 hours. We will also more importantly use our social media. We are on Twitter and on Facebook. Uh, Ms. Winston, if, if you want to share links to those two uh, social media platforms in the chat, uh, people can uh, grab that information from there. Also, we will use our news releases and the county's weekly newsletter entitled The Relay to share information as needed. Other ways we will connect with you, we will use DCTV listed here next door, which many of you uh, participate in. Uh, in my community, we use it because it makes us aware of any type of um, anything, anything that you need to be aware of in your community, whether it be something that is related to uh, crime or just information. And Watershed does use that inform that method to share information about outages. We share information about projects. Uh, Nextdoor has become a very, <clears throat> excuse me, a very useful tool for us. And I see Ms. Winston has put the Facebook link in the chat so that you can grab it from there. Finally, you will see project signs in the area. Um, they will be posted and I believe they are already posted and our contractors are available. And finally, we will be drafting a frequently asked questions so that we can have that information all available for you on our website. Next slide, please. Listed here, you will find key contact information for the project. Most important is our dedicated project hotline. Also listed here are key names of the watershed management engineering and construction team for the project. 
Finally, we have listed our 24 hour dispatch number and this is a very critical number. If something happens outside of normal business hours, this is the number you need to call. This is a 24 hour, seven, a day, seven days a week number where you can call. Next slide, please. And with that, this concludes our presentation. We thank you for your time this evening, and we will now move into the question and answer period of the presentation. Uh, communications team, do we have any questions in the chat? Ms. Penny, there are no questions in the chat at the moment. Okay, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, team. Great job. I appreciate the information. I hope it was useful information to the community. And um, again, our goal and mission is to come in to upgrade and improve this infrastructure so that you don't experience any water outages in the near future. Um, we will post this. On yes, sir. The we will post this on the website so that this information will be accessible for future use. And it seems that we do have a question. A raised hand. Director Hayes, we have a raised hand, but she did write her question in the chat. She asked, where will the construction team be parking during work hours? Great question. Who on the team can answer that? I can answer that one. Um, basically, when we are constructing the um, water lines, as we move down through Thompson Mill, um, the construction team will will try to minimize the parking areas in which they will be parking. So, if you take, for example, if we're working between a hundred linear feet in one day, we'll be in that particular section and then move throughout Thompson Mill. So that would not be a, a, a uh, one area that they will be parked. Now we do have that, we do have some lay down areas that's outside of Thompson Mill that we've already talked with the community and, and um, figured that out through our, um, our general contractor as far as the workers that will be working on the, uh, the construction of that particular line. And would you please explain what what you mean by lay down area? What what is that? I am so sorry. Lay down area is basically where we um, store our materials before um, the material actually go into the ground. So if, as you notice on the on the um, slide, when I went to open cut, we will have to open cut, bring the material to that particular area, join those pipes together, and then move on down to the next section. So a lay down area is is pretty much where we've. Uh, either ha actually contracted with a uh, resident to have that particular material there or on our easements so that we can have that particular material available to install in the um, open cut area. Very good. Mm -hmm. Again, thank you for that great question. That, that was very helpful. I hope that uh, we answered your question satisfactorily. Are there any other questions? If not, um, thank you for your time. Thank you for listening to what we have to say. And we appreciate the patience as we come in to improve the area. Note that we respect your community and the uh, area around so we will definitely make sure that we come in and do what needs to be done and return your community to you better than we arrived thank you again have a great evening and we look forward to a successful project